an international anarchist meeting is always a great opportunity to discuss and talk with different international comrades. And that is why I'm very happy to now discuss the situation in the Netherlands with a comrade from Groningen. And um, let us start with you shortly introducing yourself and telling us which group are you here with and why you think it's important to attend this international meeting. Yes, um, yeah, my name is Jacob. I'm uh, from Groningen and um, we're here with a group of uh, Dutch anarchists. We're uh, mostly with the, the Free Union, the Vrije Bond, and um, we're also here uh, with people from the uh, Amsterdam Book Fair. And uh, we came here basically to, you know, talk to friends we made at other assemblies, international assemblies, um, and also to promote, I guess, our event and make sure people go there so that we have like a nicer, you know, good connection, a nice network across borders. I think that's very important, yes. Can you also tell us a bit about the status and the situation the anarchist movement is uh, in right now in the Netherlands? Like how many groups are active there or what kinds of federation are currently active? Yeah, so uh, when I joined in 2019, uh, things were mostly happening in Amsterdam. So like the biggest city, a uh, lot of left-leaning people that then radicalize and become anarchists. It was really nice. Um, and then during COVID, actually a lot of people joined um, outside of Amsterdam too. Um, and because I'm not from Amsterdam myself, that was really nice for me. And we have now a group in Groningen, a lot of other bigger cities, but even some smaller towns now have their own groups. So uh, things are really starting to pick up. We really, um, we're quite excited. Things are going, you know, I mean, not well in general, but for the anarchist movement, things are, we're, not, we're growing. And people are um, joining for different reasons. It's a housing crisis. Um, it's, of course, the pandemic, the isolation that abroad. People are looking for community. And I think, um, yeah, we are benefiting from that, and I hope we will continue to uh, attract people. And how interconnected are the different groups? Are there currently any uh, large-scale federations that these groups uh, become part of? Or is it like in a lot of different countries that you have a lot of smaller groups that are just active for themselves in their own locality, in their own town, small town? Or do you see the growth of something bigger? Um, yeah, that actually, uh, the Free Union tries to be two things at once. It tries to be the federation for these groups, and these groups are connected, not all of them. Some are independent, but they still work together. But most groups are, um, you know, member of the Free Union. But Free Union um, also has just members, like, like just individuals, mm. um, uh, because there's only one, like, national, I guess. Like, there's one group for all the, you know, the, the Dutch region. We actually also have uh, Belgian groups. So basically the Dutch speaking area has the free union and there's groups in there and there's individuals in there. And in that way there's like a, an, uh, yeah, I would say a, a like region wide, like a Dutch speaking language area wide uh, network of anarchist groups and anarchists that, um, yeah, they do work together. So there's a nice, there is some interconnectedness. There are of course also groups that do stuff on their own and um, I guess they're informal ties. Um, but yeah, overall, I feel like we have a nice, I, you get, you know, if you want, you, have a, you can have a very nice overview of what's there. Sounds really good. Maybe let's uh, end the interview with a short discussion about the social situation the Netherlands are currently in. Because I think a lot of people in Germany were quite shocked by the regional um, elections where the BBB, the Farmers Party, won a lot of seats, especially with a program against environmentalism and from what I've heard there are also upcoming national assembly elections so maybe you could give a small input on this and how the anarchists may have to react to this and what social situation you now find yourself in. Uh, yeah we've been basically having a for 12 years we had a new liberal uh, right-wing uh, government and that recently fell the government fell so new elections are coming up and of course, since the Farm Party won in the regional elections, we predict that they will also get a lot of seats in the uh, national, like national assembly, basically in our parliament. And that will mean that um, the current parties that are in government will probably work together with the Farmer Party, and um, there will be no pressure anymore to, you know, have some, it's like like some kind of environmental laws. I think it will really not go well in that regard. They're also not very good. Their asylum like policy is horrible. Um, they only want to accept like 15,000 new asylum seekers, which is a ridiculous number, uh, or like the number shouldn't even be there. 
and um, yeah, so we are, uh, the elections are coming up, of course, we are not taking part, but <laughs> it is a good um, chance to, um, you know, make people aware of that this is not the way to uh, live as a society, I think, and that we should change things radically. Do you maybe also think there's a need to change environmental practices in the left or in the anarchist movement that you maybe need to address more social issues and combine them with environmental politics because um, I think for a lot of environmental activists it's really hard to react now to this um, large-scale right-wing backlash that often portrays itself at um, speaking for the working class that are oppressed by environmental policies coming from the parliament. So do you see an opportunity also for the anarchist movement to intervene there? I think there's um, an opportunity and there's the danger that you just described. They, the right wing people say that farmers are of course working class people. Some of them are, some of them are totally not. It really depends, but like, and also um, there's a lot of other jobs involved with this that are also like harming the environment. Um, and I think our job as anarchists is to um, not attack the individuals necessarily, like the like you know, but show to those working class people that the system is just not in their favor. It's it's not working for them. Like they they are working at these farms that other people own, rich people own them, and they um, you know get small cut of it. I think we should be more sympathetic to the individuals and way harsher on the larger corporations and the larger companies that stand above them and uh, benefit from it. I mean, milk prices have been super low. Farmers don't make, like the farmers that do this on their own don't make a lot of money. Uh, but of course, milk is of course not a nice product uh, <laughs> and all the, you know, all the horrible stuff that comes with it and it's not good for the environment. So like, of course, that's not good, but there should be a bit more sympathy with these individuals that do have their whole livelihoods uh, probably, in, you know, impacted by this. I think it should change. I think it should, you know, should probably move away from all the agriculture. Uh, I mean, like the with the animal bio industry stuff. But uh, we have to also give an alternative. That's what we're here for, right? Anarchists give the alternative, and I think that's important. And I think that's what we should focus on. Also for people in the, uh, I say the countryside that uh, currently are maybe not focused on as much as they should be. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for the interview and all the best to our comrades in the Netherlands.